guys, Jessie here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a leather holster for a drinking horn, such as this one. So this makes a drinking horn a lot more convenient to use because obviously this is not the most convenient cup to own, but a leather holster makes it into something that you can actually bring with you to, say, a LARP event or a renaissance festival like whenever that could feasibly happen in the future. <laughs> but it would also be really cool for like camping or something. I don't know, or sitting around like the quarantine Viking that you are. But anyway, I myself am a novice leather worker. I learned a lot in this project. People who are more advanced will probably be like, girl, what are you doing? But I just want to say like, if you're new to leather working, if you've never tried this before, this is a great project to start with to make either for yourself or for someone you like. In my case, I made this one for my husband who also agreed to be my amazing model. Thank you so much, Faith. But all the materials that I used are available down in the description for you to check out if you want to give this a try on your own. So with that, let's get to the walkthrough. First, you're going to need a drinking horn. So these are available on eBay, Amazon, Etsy. They're actually pretty easy to find. And the holster is made from two pieces of leather. We have the belt loop and then we have the wraparound piece that actually holds the horn. So let's start with that wraparound piece. You'll need to measure the circumference of the drinking horn where the leather is going to wrap around. So that's gonna be about one third of the way down from the top. I measured a few different areas just to find, you know, how the horn was shaped. But for me, I found that the best measurement was 6.75 to seven inches. However, this depends entirely on the horn that you have because these are real horns. Once you have your measurement, you can then cut out that wraparound piece from your leather. Now a note on what kind of leather to use. I'm using what's called vegetable tanned leather. And there are a couple different ways of tanning the leather, which is another word for finishing the leather. So vegetable tanned leather is generally considered the more environmentally friendly option. However, it does not mean that it is environmentally friendly. You can look into the ethics of that yourself if that's of interest to you. I think it should be. We all want to be responsible consumers here. Uh, but the alternative is chrome tanned leather. And this is what you'll see used in jackets, in purses, in most modern leather goods. Chrome tan leather though is more harsh on the environment it is not as great an option and it definitely won't behave in the same way that vegetable tan leather uh, does so I'm using vegetable tan leather like this because vegetable tan leather is what you can use to actually carve to create designs to dye different colors so if you are buying just your regular old leather from a craft store just know that it's probably chrome tan leather and it's probably not going to behave in the same way that the leather you see here so where do you find vegetable tan leather if not at a craft store well the best place to go is gonna be eBay. I know, who uses eBay anymore? Maybe you do. But eBay, you can go and search for vegetable tanned leather scraps. And there you'll be able to find these bundles that look like this. It'll be a bag of some mixed scraps for you to explore, uh, all roughly around this size. The company will say, you know, what's actually inside of it. But this is a great option for a couple reasons. First, you're using leather that would otherwise be thrown away. Second, it's small pieces of still perfectly good leather, so it's great for small projects like this. And third, it's really economical. This is a great way to get leather for smaller projects or for practicing. What you see here is a piece of tooling leather, meaning that it's gonna be thick enough to use for carving, as you'll see later. And as I mentioned earlier, the circumference of the drinking horn was about 6.75 inches at the place where it needed to be held. So that's how long the strip is, and then I made it 1.5 inches wide. To cut it out, I used a sharp box cutting knife. And the trick here is not to try to get it through in one go, um, especially this kind of leather. It's just gonna be too thick. Instead, make the cut using several strokes, going a little bit deeper each time. And I used the ruler as a guide, being careful to watch out for my fingers. And if you're doing this at home, please use proper knife safety. Please know that you're doing this at your own risk. I don't want anyone losing their fingers here. For the belt loop, I cut out a piece of leather that was 10 inches by 1.5 inches. I also cut a decorative diamond point at the end by finding the center of the strap, extending a perpendicular line from that point, and then connecting the edges to that end of the perpendicular. I then went back to square off the edges of that wraparound piece. 
Now you'll see that the piece that I cut wasn't actually long enough and that ended up meaning that there was a little bit of corner missing from this piece. However, I knew that it would be uh, not really visible once it was all sewn together. You'll see what that looks like later. So I didn't bother cutting out a new one. Now with my pieces cut out, I needed to practice the design that I wanted to carve on the front. Again, I'm new at this, so practice was definitely necessary. I wet the leather to prepare it for carving or tooling as it's called. The best way is to run a wet sponge over the top of the leather a couple times until it soaks in, but between you and me, I just dunked the whole thing in water until it got soft enough. I drew my design on a piece of tissue paper so that I could trace it onto the leather and then used the end of a mechanical pencil without the lead as a stylus, pressing the design into that wet leather. Then I used a swivel knife to carve out the design. So a swivel knife, if you're not familiar, it's, it's a knife made specifically for leather carving. You put your index finger on top to control the pressure and then use the rest of your hand to steer where the knife goes. Now, unlike an X-Acto knife, which would create just a thin slit in the leather, a swivel knife is actually fairly wide and somewhat blunt so that it actually pushes the wet leather away from the blade, creating a wide, noticeable indent. So the icon I decided to do is a phoenix, which is my husband's favorite symbol. And next, I decided to use a shading tool to add some more texture, but I realized that this didn't quite look right with what I was going for. Instead, I kept experimenting and practicing until I was sure I could do the design well on that actual holster. Once the design was carved, I actually molded the whole piece into a bit of a circle to make it easier to attach later. I also ended up putting a flame motif on the top of the belt loop piece. Once the pieces were dry, it was time to dye them. So I used two layers of Phoebings Pro, which I hope I'm saying that right, Phoebings, Phoebings. I used two layers of Phoebings Pro in the color Walnut, letting it dry fully in between each layer. You'll also see my lovely DIY gloves. Bet you didn't know that you'd be getting two DIYs in one video. And you want to get as even a layer as possible in order to avoid streaking. I also made sure that my strokes all went in the same direction so that if there was streaking, it would at least look natural. And then I dyed the inside as well as the edges so that it would look good even if the horn wasn't in it. Once both of these layers were fully dry, I went in with Phoebing's Antique Finish in black. So this is a gel that you can actually push into the carved areas and wipe away to make them stand out. You also wanna make sure though that you paint the entire thing with it because it does darken the leather a little bit, even outside of the carved areas. So I painted the front and the edges, but not really the back. And then you take a paper towel and buff and buff and buff. So most of the gel is removed from the surface, but it does stay in the cracks, making that carving that you just did actually stand out. So this turned out pretty dark because I wanted it to somewhat match my husband's existing leather armor. You could definitely use a lighter dye or perhaps only one layer of the walnut if you want to be able to see that design more clearly. Then once that was dry, I sealed it all in with a layer of resoline on all sides. Uh, that means even the fuzzy side, even the inside. So there are other sealants that you can use, but resoline is a great option if you want to ensure that the colors don't bleed and that it's pretty much watertight. And because there's a good chance that this is gonna get wet, I mean, it's a drinking horn, and that water could potentially you know, make the dye run, I wanted to make sure that there was no chance of that dye transferring onto the actual drinking horn. At last, it was time to sew the pieces together. So if you've never sewed leather before, I'm gonna walk you through it. So first you need to use a leather chisel to poke out the holes. And because this leather is so darn thick, I decided to do one layer at a time, poking through the first layer of leather first and then using the tips of the chisel to mark where the holes should go underneath. And then I could go back in with the chisel and actually punch those holes out fully. 
Now you could make a straighter line here by first using an edge groover. This probably would have been smart. I just completely forgot. Anyway, it was really hard to pull that bigger chisel out of the leather. In hindsight, it probably would have been easier to use a chisel that had teeth that were more far apart for leather that is this thick. I eventually switched to a two prong chisel, which was a little bit easier, but it was still good to use that longer one to get a straighter line for the first hit. Because again, I forgot to use the edge groover. So if you're familiar with sewing in general, let me just tell you, this is not like sewing cloth. It's a bit of a different process. So you're gonna cut a generous amount of string and then tie a leather needle to either end. So you're working with two needles at the same time. And leather needles are not normal needles. They are beefy little things with big eyes so that you can fit that giant waxed thread through. Once I started sewing though, I realized that the holes that I had just chiseled out were still pretty small. So I grabbed an awl, that's A-W-L, not an owl, not an A-L-L, -L, an A-W-L awl to open them up a little bit more. This was a great use of time, worth the extra step, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Finally, stitching begins. So as I mentioned, you have two needles on either end of a long string. In order to sew this thing together, you're first going to push one needle through the first hole, going through both pieces of leather. Then you're gonna pull the needles even so that there's an equal amount of string on both sides. Now, since this is an edge, right, that hole is near an edge, I decided to loop it around the outside edge and back through that same exact hole for more stability. So now we have two needles coming out on opposite sides of the same hole. From here, you're gonna pass one needle through the next hole, like you're making a normal sewing stitch. But then you're gonna take the other needle back through that same hole in the opposite direction. The result is a double stitch that is really strong. And as you go, the thread should start to look like a continuous line on both sides. And let me just say, pulling the needles through can be pretty difficult. So if you are struggling with this, your best friend is gonna be some pliers. To finish it off, I looped it around the outside again. And then to tie the knot, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna do a back stitch. So pretend like you're gonna go right back in the other direction, right over what you already did. But instead of continuing, you're just gonna do one stitch so that both needles end up on the same side. Then you can tie it off with a normal square knot and then use a lighter to carefully melt the wax of the thread to make sure it doesn't ever come undone. So with the belt loop piece ready to go, it's now time to work on attaching the wraparound piece. So this is a little bit difficult because you do need to punch all the holes before you start sewing. So to make this easier, I used the awl to scratch a line down the middle of the piece so that I could clearly see where the two ends of the wraparound edges should meet. Then I punched the holes just as before, going through the first layer all the way through and then using the tips of the chisel to mark the holes underneath, pulling that out and then going through all the holes with the chisel individually. Then of course I went back in with the awl again to make all the holes a little bit bigger. Finally, with all the holes punched out and they're all lined up, I was able to finally go in and sew them using the same method as before. And with that, it is done.
All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was useful. If you decide to try this at home, please let me know down in the comments and tell me how it went. I would love to hear it. Again, this is a great beginner project. So if you've been waiting to get into leatherworking, this is, this is the one, this is the one. Do it. If you're new here, I make videos about cosplay and costuming and similar topics. So if that's something that you're interested in, I'd love to have you stick around. Please subscribe, hit that like button. Oh, that's such a YouTuber thing to say. Hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe out there, guys. <sighs> Shut up. All right, that is it. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> <That was fun. laughs> All right, you guys, that is it. I hope that this was interesting. Uh, are you gonna give this a try? Let me down, let me down, let me, don't let me down. 